Hey guys, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be doing some thermal discharge tests to measure how much heat is generated by a single 18650 cell while it's being discharged. And today I'm going to be using some Sanyo 18650 GA cells. Now these are common cells used in uh, medium power devices such as e-bikes and, and other devices and they're rated for about 10 amps maximum discharge each. Now to test these, I've already gone ahead and I've wired up a single cell and I've done this by first spot welding a nickel strip onto the positive end of the cell here. And then I just spot welded a second one right on top to make sure that there was enough ampacity here. And then on the bottom, I did the same thing. I just spot welded two nickel strips onto the cell. And then I soldered some discharge leads onto these nickel strips. And then I went ahead and painted on some black liquid electrical tape just to make sure that we didn't have any issue with the shiny nickel surface um, causing any problems with the thermal camera because sometimes the thermal camera can't pick up accurately the heat signature on something that's really shiny and reflective. Then on the other end I just have some uh, Anderson power pole connectors. Now I'm going to be doing this test with a resistive power load which means that the current is actually going to slowly change based on the voltage. So as the voltage of the battery drops a little bit over the discharge cycle, the current is also going to drop a little bit. So it's not exactly a continuous current, but it's going to be very close. So for example, in the uh, four amp test, it's, the current's actually going to start at about four and a half amps and then end somewhere at about like 3.7 or three and a half amps. So I'm going to call that approximately a four amp continuous, but really it's um, you know ranging from about four and a half down to three and a half amps. So we're really taking the average. Now I'm going to do three discharge tests on this cell. The first one is, thank you, seven. <laughs> the first one is going to be a four amp discharge, and then I will do an eight amp discharge. And lastly, I'll do a 12 amp discharge. Now I mentioned that these cells, the Sanyo 18650 GA cells, are rated for 10 amps. So that 12 amp discharge is going to be a, a bit of abuse. We're going to see what happens when we push these cells past their limit. For the test itself, I'm going to start the discharge at 4.2 volts, which is full voltage for these cells but I'm going to cut off the test at about 2.7 volts, uh, which means that we're not going to get the absolute full capacity from these cells because they're rated down to 2.5 volts. And then lastly, before we begin the tests, I'm going to put a lot of data up on the screen. On the right side of the screen, there's going to be all the specs of the cell, um, including the voltage, the amp hours, and uh, the current at that moment, and then also the time of the test, because I'm going to speed up and skip through moments of the test so you don't have to watch an entire you know, 40 minute discharge like I do. Then on the left side of the screen, there's going to be the temperature data. So uh, feel free to pause at any time if you want to look at the data more closely. There's just a lot of numbers on the screen at once. All right, now let's test the cell. All right, so we saw some interesting data from this cell. At a four amp discharge, we reached the low 40 degrees C. At eight amp discharge, we reached the low 60 degrees C. And at 12 amp discharge, which is discharging at too much current for this cell, we reached the low 80 degrees C, which is obviously way too hot. But if you check the data sheet for this cell, 
you'll find that these cells are actually rated up to 60 degrees C, which means that even at the 8 amp discharge, which is lower than the 10 amp maximum rated discharge, we were already reaching the maximum rated temperature of these cells based on the manufacturer's spec sheet. So it shows you that these cells, they're really the rating, you have to take them with a bit of a grain of salt, which is something that those of us that work in the battery industry and use these batteries professionally already know, that you can't really um, count on the maximum rated capacity or the maximum rated uh, amp capacity of these cells because they're just, they're really overrated by the manufacturers. If you look at even the 8 amp test, we, we already got up to the maximum temperature. And you'll notice that we're not uh, achieving the full capacity of these cells, also because we're not fully discharging them but by running them at higher temperatures, there's just a lot more uh, heat being lost due to that internal resistance, and you're not getting the full capacity out of those cells. Now there's another important thing to note here, is that this was one cell, right? This is one single cell being tested, and it's got air all the way around it to cool off. But when you're using these cells in a battery pack, each one of these cells is not only generating heat by itself, but it's surrounded by many other cells, each of which is making its own little oven scenario. So the cells aren't gonna be able to cool as well as they could here on my test. So what that means is that when you're using these cells to build a larger pack and the cells are surrounded by other cells, you definitely can't use the maximum rated um, amp rating for these cells because they're not gonna be able to cool. The data that you get from the data sheet on these cells is based on one cell not many cells that are surrounded by other cells. So it's an important thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the amp rating of cells and considering how you're gonna build a battery pack out of many of these cells put together. Now this was just the first discharge test that I plan to do using the Sony, I'm sorry, the Samsung 18650 GA cells. But I also wanna do other tests with other common cells. I'm planning on testing the LG MJ1 cell, the Samsung 30Q cell, and also the Samsung 25R cell. If there are other cells that you guys want to see tested in this way, doing the thermal discharge test, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to get my hands on one of those cells and see if I can test it here as well. And the last thing is the eBike School book giveaway. So the winner of uh, one of my books, either DIY Lithium Batteries or the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself eBike Guide, the winner from the last video is... Pablo! So congratulations, Pablo. Uh, send me a private message here, let me know which book you'd like. And if any of you guys want one of my books for free as well, all you have to do is put a comment on this video, and hopefully you'll be the lucky, randomly chosen commenter at the end of my next video to win one of these books. And if you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.